Pilates is starting. People are coming in right now. We can say hello to everybody already. There's almost 50 people already. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hello, everybody. Whoa, coming in very, very fast. Let's wait um, just a couple of seconds and we will get on going. Well, this is the, the number is going up very fast. <laughs> Wow, okay, we're almost in the hundreds. So I will start making a small presentation. So this group, uh, well, first of all, welcome all. Thank you all for being in this interview. We are all very excited to be here talking to you. Um, so this group is full of creators uh, based on the German language. So um, we also focus on whoever wants to learn about life in Germany, uh, the culture, and basically how not to get lost in the country. That's what we do. Uh, that's what we try to help you with. Um, of course, I want to welcome the amazing people that we have on the group uh, today. And we actually don't have a lot of time. Like we have one hour, but time runs very fast. We know that already. So we are in going to introduce ourselves very briefly. And to break the ice a bit, I'm going to start if, it, if that's okay. So I am Andy. I am going to be moderating this group today. Um, I am a Spanish, but I have been living in Berlin for the past seven years almost. And my content is also about lear uh, learning the language, living in Germany. And I am on YouTube as Andy GM in Berlin. Um, and well, we will learn about each other more in a few seconds. So who wants to go next? Should I pick or is there a volunteer that wants to introduce himself or herself next? I have Anna it's on big. the screen. What about you? <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Hi, um, I'm Anna from Free German Lessons. Um, yeah, I'm a YouTuber. I'm, uh, I've been living a long time in Berlin, but now I'm staying in Greece, wonderful country. Um, and uh, yeah, just let's see for how long. Uh, my main focus is or was teaching a lot of grammar. And I'm trying now to make it a bit more interactive, like having more exercise, interactive exercises and more the focus on speaking. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. So next on my list is Donny. What about you? Yeah, hi guys. So I'm Donny and um, me and my wife, she can't be with us today, but we have a YouTube channel called Passport2. You can find us on YouTube and Instagram. And we primarily make videos about kind of our culture differences between the US and Germany because we both are originally from the US and now we currently live in Southwest Germany. And a lot of that kind of entails the language as well, because both of us have been learning it as we've been living here and kind of our journey learning it. Um, but then also primarily focusing on, yeah, a bunch of the, the culture shocks that maybe we've experienced here and life in Germany. Yeah, there are not, there are a lot actually, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. Amazing, thank you so much. Uh, so what about you, Steffi? Yeah, hey everyone, my name is Steffi. Um, my channel is called Lerne Deutsch and my main focus is on um, yeah, basically teaching German, mostly slang, everyday situations, and but also a bit of grammar. Yeah. And, and I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> where and where are you from? Oh yeah, I'm from Berlin. I'm uh, born and raised here and I'm still in Berlin. Great, <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much. So another Berliner, right? Juliana? Yeah, hi. So my name, my name is Juliana. I'm the person behind german to go and I have started to teach German while I was studying abroad, living in several countries. And that's yeah, how I discovered my passion. And um, my main focus is on yeah, German for the levels A1, A2 and B1 right now, but B2 is on the way. And yeah, it's a little bit of everything, grammar and, and um, yeah, other interesting <laughs> stuff, let's say. Yeah, so I'm really excited to be here and um, yeah, welcome. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Let's go with the last woman of our group, uh, Maria. And so she was labeled as the last woman. No, I mean the last woman <laughs> to speak. Oh my God, sorry, that came out wrong. Sorry. No worries, it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, I'm Maria. My, my uh, YouTube channel is called Deutsch mit Maria and I have been doing YouTube videos for five years now. 
and we emphasize on advanced levels of German. So B2, C1, the impossible levels actually. And I also run an online school for German as a foreign language in case you're really serious about German. So yeah, and originally I'm from Riga, from Latvia. So my mother tongue is Russian. So I had to learn German at some point myself. That's why I have, I, I can brag about it quite well, I think. <laughs> and I That's good, doesn't it? <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. So let's go with Michael now. Yeah, the last man of the group. <laughs> so uh, I am uh, Michael. Uh, let's, let's say that way, the best for the last. <laughs> I don't mind, it's fine. So I'm Michael, I'm the head behind Smarter German, Smarter Way to Learn German, and I offer online courses for self-learners from A1 to C1 nowadays, and a few other things that are actually pretty interesting. And uh, my aim is actually to make German tutors redundant, so I'm a little bit of a rebel here, but um, let's see how that goes, yeah? Oh my gosh, okay. Please don't rebel now because you're going to make me nervous. It has to run smoothly, so please. <laughs> no, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, thank you all um, so much for introducing yourselves. Uh, we are going to learn more about each other in a few minutes because today to make this interview slash meeting a bit more fun for everyone and everyone who is watching us who may not know us just yet, we're going to do it, instead of just asking questions, we are going to do it in a true false game. So I'm gonna explain it. Um, it's pretty easy, basically, um, everyone here will take a piece of paper. Do you have your pieces of paper ready? Amazing. Amazing. Where, where's the rebel's piece of paper? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, we will take the piece of paper and we will cover our cameras. And I will make a statement related to our lives or what we teach or anything. And whoever's um, statement for whoever's statement is true, then we are going to take the piece of paper out of the camera and uh, we are going to learn more about each other. We will go from there. I will keep um, explaining throughout the way, so don't worry about it. Just let's make an example, for example. Let's make an example, for example. Amazing, Andrea. All right, so let's cover the cameras. <laughs> and for, perhaps I say, you teach German. You don't teach German, Danny? All right, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. All right, so that was the example. Now you know more about it, just a little bit. And we're going to start with a very easy first round. It's just going to be like a true-false round, no farther than that, just no questions. Um, all right, so let's cover the cameras once again. First statement is, you are German. Oh, so we only have four of, <laughs> how many are we? <laughs> Seven. Okay, amazing. And if you are not German, where are you from? So I said it briefly, I am from Spain. Donnie is from the USA, right? Correct, yep. And Maria from Latvia. And, and I'm half Swiss. You put, your, you put your paper like this. Yes. What does that mean? Yes, I'm... I'm, I'm half Swiss, like my mom is uh, from Switzerland, I've been studying there and yeah, I can really feel it culture-wise. All right, so you're half-half, you're mixed. Yeah. All right, amazing. That means I can easily criticize Germans, <laughs> because you know. <laughs> True as well, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's put the papers again. This is gonna happen a lot, so get used to covering your cameras. So you are living in Germany. I'm not there right now, but I live in Germany, in Berlin. What about you, Donny? Uh, I live in Rhineland Falls, in Southwest you, Germany. Oh, okay. Steffi? Um, yes, I live in Berlin. Juliana? Berlin too. Maria? <laughs> Bavaria here, Nuremberg. Nuremberg, very pretty. And Michael? Berlin as well. Oh, Berlin as well, I love Berlin here. And Anna, where do you live actually? In the south of Messini, in the wonderful Greece, in a very, very small village right at the sea. Oh my God, I might be visiting you at some point. Absolutely, Absolutely. you're right. all welcome. It's so <laughs> fantastic here. That sounds amazing. <laughs> all right, let's cover it once again. Are we already used to putting the papers? All right, yes. so <laughs> you have a YouTube channel. This was actually only an excuse to change our names 
right now to our YouTube channels if you want, so people can subscribe to our channels already instead of having like Andy, Steffi, and so on. We can just write our YouTube channels if you're okay with that. All right. Absolutely. Now everyone knows what our YouTube channels are, or if you prefer your Instagram account, that's also fine. So they can al already kind of stalk us there, watch our videos and so on. All right. Next question. <laughs> this is actually for us to brag a bit and is you have your own language school or courses? <laughs> Just to put it in kind of a bit. All right, so um, I do have some courses there and then under Teachable and it's pretty easy to find them is NDGM. That's it. Juliana? Yeah, my uh, course is on uh, www.germantogo.com. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Maria? It's called surprisingly Deutsch mit Maria. Wow. <laughs> Well, no wonder there are minor NDGM. It's like the most basic thing. <laughs> and Michael? It's smarter German, like the car, just smarter and then German in one word. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Um, let's go right now to the round two. We already kind of got to know each other a bit. In the round two, we will get a bit more into details. There are the same rules. But after answering yes or no, just open your camera so we can all see you and uh, we can talk a bit more about what these statements are. It's statements, statements, my God, yeah. that I'm going to make right now. All right, let's cover it again. All right, your content is solely in German. All right, so let's uncover so we can hear them. We hear them even they are covered, but you know what I mean. So Steffi and Maria, do you want to explain a bit more about it? <laughs> Steffi, did you also put subtitles or um, anything like that? Um, yes, so um, my contents are mostly videos. Um, I have some older videos that are in English, but um, now all the videos are in German. But yeah, you're right. I actually put uh, German and English subtitles. Okay, so it's inclusive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing, and Maria? I guess I'm known for the clearest and uh, most understandable German on YouTube at all because my subscribers keep telling me that they understand me, but they don't understand native speakers. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's actually quite good. <laughs> I'm not sure, but well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is because they want to learn with you. So that's actually quite good. Um, all right, if your content is not in German, for example, my content is um, in Spanish, I explain is, um, German in Spanish. I try to make connections with the Spanish the way I learn German, so it's kind of easier for also Spanish speakers to learn it. And um, yeah, but I also do a lot of content in German as well. What about you, Dani? Yeah, so we do all of our content in English, but I have done, I think, five videos last spring um, I did in German. And mm -hmm. primarily that's just because we ourselves are learning German. And so we can't really do it well enough to like fully commit doing videos completely in German. But so we kind of show that process of just our lives here in English. Totally get it. Yeah, because when I started, I also couldn't speak that that good of a German. So I started in Spanish and I just kept it that way. So yeah, yeah. I, I get it. So Juliana? Yeah, so I start uh, explaining the rules in English uh, in levels A, A1 and for the first part of level A2. And then when I'm sure and certain that my students are able to understand what I'm explaining to them, then I'm slowly phasing the English out and I start to speak German only. And in comprehension videos, I usually also have either a version with subtitles or an English translation below the videos as well. Mm -hmm. So German English in this case, yeah. amazing. <laughs> and Anna? Oh, Anne, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot in German. Um, yeah, sometimes, you know, when I'm doing everything in German, then I get comments, please do some explanations in English <laughs> and the other way around. So I'm trying to do most in German and now also everything is uh, subtitled with uh, German and also um, English. Mm -hmm, in mm -hmm, the new okay, videos. all right. And Michael, I'm sorry, yeah. you're at the bottom of my, of my grid view, so... I'm, I'm happy to be at the bottom as well. Um, I, I teach 
I teach exclusively in English because I want everyone to be doubt free and feel secure. And if you do this in German, which I've done as a teacher for many years, you're just making things way more difficult than necessary. And yeah. uh, therefore, and I actually want to prepare learners to deal with real life materials. If I prepared them, they would be horrible. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think so. Maria felt a bit, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> she reacted kind of bad to that statement. There's, there's plenty of people who think differently. That's uh, totally fine with me. Yeah, no, I totally get it. Um, I mean, doing it in German helps a lot, obviously, uh, solidly in German, but it becomes kind of difficult for people who have like low level or they are just studying. So I think it's good that we are a mix. So here we have a lot of languages and I think everyone right now can learn with us because we have German, Spanish, English, we have everything. So there's a space for everyone. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, let's go with the next question. Or statement. In this case, we are going to talk about content. Your content focuses on life in Germany. Yeah, kind of like that. Wow, a lot of grammar, a lot of a lot of um, language teachers here. All right, so um, I put half half because I do everything. Like I do content about how to live in Germany as a foreigner, how to get adapted to a new country such as Germany and everything you need to like for to, to get into university, to get a new job, to find an apartment, all that stuff. But I also do a ton of videos about learning German. So that's why I put like half half. And Donnie also explained that he and his wife yeah, you want to go on? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> my wife and I just came from the U.S. and that was the primary focus of our channel was just the differences that we've experienced here. But also just living in Germany, realizing uh, how much we thought, I mean, one, we were learning German so we can, everybody in Germany speaks the same German and realizing, oh, there's mm -hmm. a million different dialects and mm -hmm. accents and differences. And then every American thinks of the Bavarian German. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of our channel. We're trying to highlight uh, just how vastly diverse uh, Germany is and life in Germany because of that. Very, very interesting because not a lot of people can imagine the cultural shock that it means, but it's actually a quite a shock. Even if you come from a country that is relatively close, such as Spain in this case, the shock is it's amazing. It's like a punch in the face. So it's good <laughs> that, that we explain those kind of things. Steffi, I saw that you also took your paper out. Yeah, I was thinking how you meant the question because um, like I do, I try to teach a lot of like the daily German, like when, how to use the language in a daily way, basically. Mm -hmm. but I do actually not focus so much on life here, even though I did some videos about it, about culture in Germany, about how it is living here. Um, and I also like on Instagram, for example, I share sometimes stories about news, what's happening mm -hmm. here. Um, so I try to integrate it a bit, but yeah, I think it's mostly the language, but I try to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you taking the paper. I was like, yeah, okay, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for those uh, who focus on grammar, is there anything or, or the language, is there anything of the grammar that you focus on or is it more about just like uh, dividing your content into levels or how do you do that? For example, Juliana? Yeah, my content is divided into levels and several steps inside the levels. So mm -hmm. yeah, the main focus is grammar, but I'm not only teaching grammar. There's also a little bit uh, like there are exercises, there are role plays, there are okay. stories as well, uh -huh. um, speaking sessions. Uh, like it's a it's a big mix, but the biggest part of it is grammar. Yeah. Yeah. German grammar is important, people. Don't trust people that tell you your grammar is not important to learn because it's, it's extremely basic important, basis. Yeah. I think. Um, all right. So free German lessons. What about you? Yeah. Um, well, several things. I'm not only doing grammar, I'm doing also a lot of vocabulary because yeah, grammar is super important. It's right. You need to really understand it. Um, but then the vocabulary, they're also like everyday situation, like going to the doctor or whatever. About the cultural thing, um, I'm from Bavaria originally. I'm half Swiss. I lived in Berlin and there I taught, uh, for example, German at a university. And I was like confronted with like, oh, the Bavarians are whatever Berlin is. Of course, they say things like this. Uh, and so for me, it would be very difficult to teach something about culture, like about Bavarians, 
that's one part about Berliners. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it's difficult uh, because it's so yeah, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, there's so a huge variety. But you mentioned also that you are in a position that you can actually judge Germans. So you could actually, <laughs> um, do you teach something about culture or of way you're living or something like that? Yeah, in my, life, in my life classes, we had a lot of fun about yeah, talking about the Germans. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, one yeah. time. Yeah. All right. Uh, Maria, what, uh, how do you teach your German? So basically, I concentrate on exams, but the funny thing is we, we do prepare our people for exams and I offer courses which guarantee that you will pass B2 or C1, which was pretty scary in the beginning, but I don't actually care about exams, I care about the people. So we talk a lot of motivation, about motivation and stuff, why, why you actually learn the language, what do you want to achieve, because on the level of C1 it's not possible to learn a bit of the language, you have to really dive into it and you can't do that without lots of motivation. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I think uh, perhaps one thing that this group has in common and probably every educational content creator is that we focus a lot on the people that learn their languages with us or learn with us all together. Um, it's just like helping them achieve what we went through or what we know and they want to learn as well. So. I think that's quite important that we focus on the per on the people that we are reaching to rather than um, on the content that we put out. So that's amazing. Um, also, Michael. I think what's different with my work is that I actually want you to be independent as soon as possible because that's the reason why you learn a language. You don't want to depend on a teacher or on this course even. So I'm happy if you leave me after my first course <laughs> because that means you have understood how to learn the language. So I teach you how to learn. So you, be, you feel capable of, of continuing with real world materials and finding your way here on your own. Some people like a little bit of structure for a bit longer. So uh, I understand that it's also, it's lovely to, to work with someone, right? Yeah. But I don't do that in person. I am just in the background and I, I know most of my most active students and those who are more silent learners, they show up one day or not. So, so it's for everyone. Definitely for everyone. And it's a lot of psychology in there because learning a language has so much to do with learning psychology and also personal psychology. And it's, it's in a beautiful way with the one thing that Germans are famous for, and that is humor. Yes. Ooh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Something to say about that, Germans. <laughs> beautiful, huh? Juliana, Steffi, Anna. He left you speechless. speechless. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're going to move uh, to the next question, if that's okay. Let's put the papers again in front of the camera. Um, your subscribers are mostly living in Germany. Okay, we have a nice mixture. And for the ones that are not from Germany, where are they from? Mine are mainly from Latin America. Hey, Mexico. <laughs> mainly Mexico. Hola, Mexico. ¿Cómo estamos? <laughs> um, Juliane, where are yours from? Yeah, so about one third of my uh, students are living in Germany. Uh, after that, um, lots of people are from the United States and then from India as well. And then many of them also live in Austria and Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, sorry, I didn't ask Donny, but uh, you said Germany, so... Germany? Yeah. yeah, yeah. My audience is about seventy percent uh, living in Germany, and then what? yeah, and the other bit is about eight percent U.S. And then the rest are also Austria, Switzerland, other. That's Germany so people. interesting. So you think yeah. probably Germans or people living in Germany are watching your channel to see what you say about them? Yeah, that's <laughs> what I found. And I don't want to cross anybody here, but Germans love okay. hearing people talk about themselves. Yeah. And besides that, they also <laughs> love to correct <laughs> us all the time. That's it. <laughs> so I saw Steffi like, mm -hmm. yeah, they, and I mean, they're, they're great, but yeah, they love to watch it. And then if they catch me slip up on one thing, they love to correct and tell me what yeah. I've done oh, wrong. And so, so they eat it up. Yeah. And it's, but it's fun. They're, it's a really cool audience and we learn a lot from them. 
Yeah, but the thing is that even when when they want to tell you something like, hey, this is not right, this is not wrong, they still are tell you like so politely, at least they have told me so politely in my comments, German people that learn Spanish or something. Um, they're like, hey, you're wrong here. This is not, but it's okay. Don't worry about it. So it's kind of nice. They, they watch to kind of see what you say, but they, they correct you very nicely. So <laughs> yeah, well, I think correcting nicely too means different things to different people because whereas like an American will beat around the bush for an hour before they finally get to telling you what they're correcting you on and a yeah. German will maybe I mean they, they'll say something nice and the, but they'll be a lot more direct um but yeah I mean they're they're friendly about it for sure what do you think about that Steffi I see your faces <laughs> well um yeah I like when I get criticized it's mostly also by Germans <laughs> I oh, think yeah. it's, a, it's a German thing uh, um yeah, but I think it's not only German, right? I mean, we all like to criticize kind of a bit, at least, <laughs> right? I mean, it's not only German, it's international. So, um, Anna, where are your subscribers mainly coming from? From Germany. As well. Um, and then, mm -hmm. yeah, and then a bit like uh, Juliana um, said, yeah, it's mm -hmm. nice. And, and then from all these small countries, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing. Yes. Awesome. And Maria? Sorry, I'm, I, am I telling your, na your name correctly? Because I always get confused. I don't know if you say Marija, Maria. I have heard all of it. So <laughs> I, I recognize my name in every form, but it's I'm Maria sorry. normally, just the regular Maria. I've always said Maria, so it's just what I'm used to. So, all right, Maria. <laughs> so we have a nice blend, really. So from all over the world, Russian speakers, Arab Arabic speakers, uh, people from India, from China. So really uh, a very big mix. Mm -hmm. Amazing. India. You, a, a couple of you already mentioned India. I don't think I have anyone from India, but also my content is in Spanish, so it's kind of difficult. Uh, <laughs> all right, Michael? Yeah, yeah most, it's, it's a mix between people that are in Germany that come from all over the world exactly. and uh, Indians and US Americans, but basically they come from every country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th there's always a mix. That's, that's what is amazing about this. We can reach to so many people from so many different countries that it's just, it's just great. I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> All right, let's go to the third round. Uh, we are going to move on um, a bit more on professional topics, if that's okay. Um, let's cover the lenses once again. All right, um, you are working on your channel on a full-time basis. Okay, if not, if you have a parallel job in case of Anna and Michael probably, what do you guys do besides your um, channels, courses and so on? I, I heavily neglect my YouTube channel. I'm so not a YouTuber. Uh, way too old for that, for my taste. But um, I use it to to just make you familiar with what I do and to say hello. Mm -hmm. But I work on my online course. I develop learning techniques, improve them. I work with the people uh, in the background. They ask questions and I see how they can actually get an answer very quickly. Not in person, but to create systems that make me redundant. Because I don't want to sit here 24 hours and answer questions that have been asked 10,000 times. Um, so there's a way, technology is a beautiful tool to help people learn fast and with joy whenever they want, not waiting for anyone to respond. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is actually my, my, my talent and I, my deepest joy. Mm -hmm. And you are exploding that um, talent, you said somehow. Du nutzt es yeah. aus. <laughs> yeah. All right, and Anna? Well, now I'm also a mom of a toddler. <laughs> um, so that means I'm only working sometimes now with Corona and lockdown and no babysitter. Of course, it is difficult. Um, so, but I'm also doing with my best friend from university, kind of a childhood dream. And we're writing children's stories. It's an oh. app called Tara Stories. Um, or Tara's Geschichten and it's in English, German, Spanish and Swiss German and I'm reading, writing um, and it's a lot of fun, a lot of work as well and uh, so it's kind of my time is half half mm -hmm. let's say but my time is very limited <laughs> <laughs> yeah perhaps you can write it also in the chat so everyone can also search yeah. for your 
Geschichten. Ja, yeah, it's also a nice way to learn German if, if you are like a bit advanced. Yeah. Exactly. Learning by reading. I think that's amazing too. That's what, how I'm And trying listening. to learn. Listening. Yeah. It's the most important oh, thing. Oh, listen. Yeah. Okay. No, that's even better. <laughs> listening. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's all with audio. All right. Amazing. Then you guys, she wrote a link in the chat in case you want to check it out. Just go for it. And thank you all so much for everyone who is um, writing in the chat. We will get to your questions in the last 15 minutes. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, we are going to keep going for a bit more and then let's cover again. So now we're focusing on um, your jobs and creating con German content or your courses or everything related to that. So you do absolutely everything on your own or with your wife, that's okay too. <laughs> okay, in case not, um, who do you have help with, Juliane and Maria? How does your business look like? Okay, should I start? Um, so, well, actually, um, about content creation, I'm actually yeah, doing most of it um, by myself, but from time to time, there's another German teacher who's writing some texts for me or example sentences. And um, I started outs outsourcing the subtitling for the videos because mm -hmm. that takes so much time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and um, yeah, apart from that, I have a great developer um, who I found who was one of my former students uh, who is taking care of my website. Mm -hmm. so Amazing. <laughs> on, my, on my own. And then, well, there's my husband who also <laughs> like I can come to him with all my ideas. We share, we discuss, about, uh, discuss them. He helps me with uh, decision taking and um, mainly watching the kids while I'm doing events like this as well. So, yeah. That's amazing. That's, That's amazing. amazing. You're a team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are a team. That's great. And Maria, what about you? Well, speaking of my language school, I have 30 plus people on my team. So I'm the queen of delegating. Ask me. Can you please Maybe. teach me? Sure. I need to delegate. And sure. it's just, me too. it's besides me delegating. It's so <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Oh, we need to talk, Maria. I, I have <laughs> definitely, you know, I need to talk to find me. <laughs> where, where do I get an appointment with the, with the queen? I, I need to know. <laughs> you will be hearing from me. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, this one is tricky. Well, it's not tricky, but I think we can all relate. Let's go for it. And it's you had difficulties in the beginning or even still have them when you have to put courses out, um, create content and all that, on a, all that stuff. I have to take it very fast because I still have a lot of issues. Like, I want to know you guys, where do you get your ideas from? How do you do it? Please illuminate me. <laughs> I have a little monkey sitting on my shoulder that whispers this ideas into my ear. I need a monkey. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so for, for example, me, um, I do get most of my ideas from my, I think it's probably with most of you the same. Um, my, the people that follow me, my subscribers are so on. They are just absolutely amazing. If any of you are here. Gracias. Um, but they all come up with a lot of questions, a lot of ideas, and um, it's quite amazing. So thank you so much, guys. What about you? For example, Donny. Yeah, so my ideas are kind of like slow, long processes. I'll just, throughout my day, I'll just see something that makes me think of an idea for a video, and I'll write a note down on my phone. And it's not enough to actually make any kind of content off of, but then Maybe like a month later, I'll remember, I'll see something that will like link back to another thing. So on my phone, I have like a note of like 70 different video ideas, but like Ooh. none of them are like complete yeah. enough to really make content. So I'll scroll through and like look for something and I get frustrated because I have like half of ideas, but um, that's really, it just kind of, I, or laying in bed at night, if I'm trying to fall asleep, I'll suddenly, something will pop in my head, I have to write it down or else absolutely absolutely i can totally relate probably all of us here i see a lot of yeses so yeah, yeah that's amazing it's like I, i'm sometimes trying to sleep and it's just like oh my god that's that's brilliant andy and i have to write it down yeah. uh or sometimes i go through my list and it's just like i have this idea but it's not quite enough to make a video out of it so i have to um take another idea on top of that well it's a lot of yeah 
guys, creating content is difficult. <laughs> and what about you, Steffi? Um, yeah, it's a bit a mix of everything. Like it's like you said, like I get a lot of questions. Um, this is definitely a great inspiration because um, I'm trying to answer their questions. So this is always good. Um, also like the daily life, if I talk to German friends or friends that speak German, sometimes when I hear an idiom, then I'm like, um, oh yeah, that's actually good. I can use that, um, mm -hmm. make a video out of it. Um, yeah. And yeah, sometimes it's also just an interesting topic when I think, oh, this could be really nice. Um, let's do something about prepositions. I haven't done this in a while. Um, so it's a bit of a mix of everything, I would say. Yeah. Your ideas seem unlimited, to be honest. It's just, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> what about you, Juliane? Where do you, get your, where do you get your ideas from? Yeah, well, I try to build a logical structure in the course. So um, when I feel that, yeah, well, I, I have this, um, yeah, the structure in the course and what has, um, I, I see what's the next logical point, the next logical step, uh, step in the way. And that's um, what I teach then. And mm -hmm. otherwise I embed this into yeah, everyday life as well. So the ideas are really everywhere. Sometimes students, I see where students have problems and then I create another video on, on that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's everywhere, but the time is so limited. That's the big problem. <laughs> exactly. Ideas are everywhere. It's just like everywhere you look, you can, you can, take it and take a, make a video out of it or explanation or something. It's just the time. It's mm -hmm. just so limited. All right. And you, Anna? Um, I've been teaching German for many years in life courses. And I was teaching also at um, different universities where I had like, where I did also some co-teaching with really great teachers. Mm -hmm. That gave a lot of um, knowledge how to explain grammar really, really easily. But then, actually, my biggest inspiration is, sorry, sounds, <laughs> sounds weird, it's myself, because I've been learning Arabic, Another Farsi, um, French, Italian, and now I'm learning Greek. And um, I'm, con yeah, I'm really trying to, to learn more about how do we actually learn, how does our brain work, um, how is it... And now, right now, I have a lot of ideas, but not really time. But I will do a kind of new format, format out um, mm -hmm. on on YouTube mm -hmm. to make it kind of more in interactive and mm -hmm. really useful and easy. And oh my God, it's, it's complicated. It's yeah, but it's great. No, I think it's amazing. And the thing is that uh, your inspiration is you, or you get your ideas from yourself. That's amazing because at the end of the day, you are also going through that process. So it's great that uh, whichever problems you're facing or ideas that come to your mind, because you are doing it as well, you just put them out and help other people with them. That's amazing. Probably you hear my cat um, shouting. Um, so Maria, can, when I go for it, while I open the door to my cat, one second. <laughs> sure. I guess I'm one of those who never run out of ideas. Uh, what what to talk about in my videos and I can relate to Anna very well because I like learning I love learning and not just learning languages I deal with memory techniques I'm almost an NLP master and I do lots of stuff so it all kind of flows into my videos so the more I learn the more interesting I become to myself the more interesting I'm to my audience so yeah. this is kind of a never-ending story, I hope. Ah, uh, yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> and what about you, Michael? How do you, I I'm interested, how did you get to um, connect, for example, psychology and teaching German? Well, I, since I'm 20 years old, uh, I decided to go back to school after having worked for a couple of years. So I needed to relearn how to learn. I never really learned it. So I went through mnemonics and also learning techniques and learning psychology. And learning psychology also has to do with your own psychology. I'm deeply interested in the question, who am I and who are you? Yeah. And that kind of is connected. If you learn a language, it is a self-experience. You experience mm -hmm. yourself in a way that is unique because you cannot express your usual self, whatever that may be. Yeah. And that, that's how it all connected. I, I made my hobby, my life uh, a living, let's say. So I, didn't, I never understood the separation between work and real life yeah? and working for the weekend. That never made uh -huh. sense to me. Yeah. So this is all, it all came together and Smarter German is just the culmination of all these things. It just happened, basically. I didn't really create it. It just, my hands did something and it's there. 
and it's beautiful yeah so this is how it goes and the biggest inspiration of course the struggles of my learners because you see there is a hindrance there is an obstacle and you want to understand and i'm a i'm very analytic and uh -huh. it's just a pleasure to go into the, like take it apart and put it together in a way that everybody says like yes thank you and this is this is how i work and that's amazing you got me interested there um yeah that's, that's amazing yeah i never thought of that that way and it's definitely very interesting so i may have to look into that as well thank you so much um so you guys we're going to go into a couple of more personal questions and then we will go it's just uh, two questions and then we will go and see what the chat has to tell us all right okay Ah, oh, this is deep. So, you guys, do you feel like you are you are not understood in the way that you have to or or used to um, have to explain to your family and friends what you are doing and why? Am I the only one? <laughs> Am I the only? Oh, really? I thought that everyone would be like, yes, I feel I'm not understood. I have to explain everybody. Uh, <laughs> it's just. Um, the moment I started doing YouTube, people um, didn't understand why I was doing it. It was just, I was teaching German. I was trying to help through my experience and a lot of people didn't understand it. And sometimes uh, when I get asked, and what do you do for a living? I go and say, well, I teach German, I teach uh, languages online and I am a content creator. Because if I say YouTuber or do Instagram, they kind of look at me, let's say bad, um, but they still don't understand like, okay, so you do videos and that's your job. Okay, so so that's what you do. Am I getting it right? I feel sometimes like it's just kind of like, oh, okay, that's what you do, whatever. You know, like that's not a real job. Um, it's kind of hurtful sometimes, but I know I'm here for a purpose, purpose and I do this for a purpose and my subscribers and followers keep me motivated. So I will keep going. What about you guys? Donnie, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's definitely relatable for me. Um, I think even still, if someone asked me kind of like what I do, I would never describe myself as a YouTuber or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. Not that I think there's anything wrong with it either. Yeah. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. I think a lot of people don't really understand it either. I mean, even literally last night, I had a former coworker of mine who was messaging me and he was like, hey, I saw your YouTube channel and I saw you're getting some really good views now. Do you think this is something you'll ever be able to turn into a full-time thing? It's like, well, yeah. And then he's like, well, you actually can make money with that? Like, well, yeah. And so it's just even, and he's young too. So it's just not really understood, I think, for a lot of that. So yeah. it's kind of hard to express that. And uh, I think there's just that kind of millennial tie where mm -hmm. it's like, maybe you can't do another job. So you just try to make videos on YouTube kind of <laughs> So you kind of oh, yeah, they're so true. Yeah, yeah it's you like, have to kind of fight that off, but yeah, exactly. But people don't know we still had our jobs probably before going into YouTube, or we still have them besides YouTube or doing content or whatever. So it's just um, what you just said. Two nights ago, I was having dinner with somebody, and they asked me like, "Hey, so what do you do?" And I showed my YouTube channel, and they were like, "For real? Okay, do you do cool. you, Carol?" But yeah, it's just kind of uh, all right. But I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm not changing. Not anytime soon. Juliana, what about you? Yeah, I just say that I'm teaching German online and mm -hmm. everybody's fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is that and if you grow on social media or YouTube channel or whatever, they are bound to find you, right? So sometimes, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, sometimes I get messages from like old, um, from people that went with me to school or something and they're like, is this you? Is this what you do now? So you haven't gone to college or whatever? I'm like, <laughs> no, I mean, how do you connect those kind of things? You know, it's just like so weird, the messages that I get from people that used to go with me to, with, to school or whatever. It's weird, but yeah. What about you, Steffi? Well, um, so I thought for me at the beginning, it was quite hard to actually find uh, a title for what I'm doing. Am I a YouTuber? Am I an Instagrammer? Am I a German teacher? What am I actually doing? So this was a bit of difficult. But um, other than that, like when I meet new people, I think at the first moment, it might be similar, not so extreme. Like I never got a negative reaction to it. Um, but maybe they didn't understand because it's not a really a traditional job. It's more like something new, like content creator or so mm -hmm. um, 
but once I explain what I'm doing, um, it's yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. <laughs> uh, what about you, Anna? Um, so my story is like this. I was teaching German in a lot of big companies mm -hmm. where people were making a lot of money. They were explaining me when I was a student, when I was studying teaching, how to invest my money. Mm -hmm. okay. um, like buying houses and stocks and whatever. It was really funny. They didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, so, but what I realized very fast is that so many people get burnouts, they are unhappy, they are spending all their life for the company and I realized that's not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Berlin because that's the place to be <laughs> and um, studied, made a master and then I started this YouTube channel and of course all my friends were starting to having a career. I was earning that much money but mm -hmm. then I was living in Berlin. Back then it was okay, it was not so expensive as, as it became today and uh, now I'm living in uh, Greece. I have um, a kid and I can work a couple of hours a week. Um, it's okay. Uh, I mean, I don't make tons of, uh, of, of money, but still, I, it's, it's fine. It's good. And I have a really good life. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Like, really grateful. But you're doing what you love and you are happy. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And that's... And one of my best friends just had a burnout. That's mm -hmm. so sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and she's, she's 33. Yeah. Moral of the story, guys, just follow your dreams wherever they may be. If you work hard exactly. enough on them, they will be profitable for you to, to live on that and to work on that your whole life. So just go for it. You will be happier and you will feel more fulfilled, I would say. Um, what about you, Maria? Well, I had a really nice transi transition because of Corona, because mm -hmm. when I started my language school four years ago, when someone asked me what I did and I said, you know, I have an online language school, they were like, oh, online, I thought you, re you had a real one. Nowadays, when I say I have an, a language school online for four years now, so I started it before Corona, everyone <laughs> goes like, oh, wow, this is the right decision nowadays. Ah, good for you. Yes. <laughs> So, and the questions from my surroundings stopped when I started hiring people. So I hired my former classmate from Riga and I hired a former colleague from a language school I used to work at. So it feels good and people get, you know, that it's, it's serious. It's not mm -hmm. just, I do it for fun. I mm -hmm. really can, can give jobs to people, yeah. which is awesome. That's amazing. I like... I still, I'm, I'm going to say once again, I'm contacting you later. So, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you. And what about you, Michael? Do you feel any kind of undervalued at some point because of what you do? <laughs> no, because I don't no. see value, <laughs> value, value in the outside world. It's, uh, I used to do that in the beginning. I was really looking for people's acknowledgement and and I was really insecure about what I was doing. It's just the beginning. But over time, you kind of gain confidence in what you do and also that your material maybe is indeed good. And um, yeah, it's, it's the feedback of the users that actually help in, in this regard. And also, yeah, it's, it's like in, in everyday life. Yeah, if you need the acknowledgement of the outside world, you, you, mm -hmm. it's a recipe for misery. So yeah, um, that's, that's my aim, not to, not to debate be dependent on that. Yeah. that that's very good but it's it's kind of um, difficult sometimes uh, well it doesn't happen to sure. me anymore because it's in for example at the beginning when I started YouTube um, for example my family not perhaps my parents know they just do what you do and just do it well they said but for example ankles or whatever they used to say what you do are you what, what is that so it's just kind of difficult not to feel kind of um, I don't know, kind of bad because of their feedback um, at the beginning, mainly, and from family and friends mainly. But uh, the world, yeah. the world can think whatever they want, and you just yeah, it's have definitely to... a longer process. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but but it's it's a process worth going through. Exactly, absolutely true. Um, somebody in the chat asks, let's say a number very fast, each of us, how many hours a week do we work usually? Donny, 
I do about 40 to 50 hours a week. Same, 40 to 50. And if I'm preparing webinars or courses, then it can be up to 60, 70. Easy. Yeah, I can um, exactly. Juliana? I would love to work all day long, but I cannot because I have two little kids. And right now with Corona, like I can count the days that the kids have been at school and kindergarten in the last year on 10 fingers, you know. So it's really hard to work when they are at home. So I only have the evenings left. But That's as good. soon That's as good. all this craziness is over, I will get back to working more. And I'm really looking forward to that, too. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Whatever hours you work, it's great. Um, what about you, Steffi? Yeah, also way too much, like the same like you guys. Um, yeah, like especially now with times of Corona, like I have my office here, so I spend all day here mm -hmm. and I just work. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anna? Um, yeah, I have two hours a day for the children books app, doing sports, meditation and the channel. <laughs> <laughs> because All then right. my fantastic Maria. husband goes oh, goes out with the kid yeah <laughs> yeah then my husband goes out with the kid and the evening is uh it's time for parents <laughs> yeah. no all break. right um maria how many hours a week more or less i don't count so between okay. i don't know 20 and 120 depending on the week <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, i basically delegate anything that i don't want to do so sometimes I take 30 hours per week just to talk to, to my people, to my customers. And mm -hmm. this is a very pleasant kind of work, I have to say. Yeah, it's very nice. And Michael? Oh, I used to work more in the beginning when I was still teaching one-on-one. -on -one. It was like eight to 10 hours a day at times, but only for shorter periods because it burns you out. But now it's two to four hours a day and um, sometimes a day off or two and uh, I'm good at delegating and organizing. It's one of my other talents. So um, I work with the people that anything someone else can do as good as I can, someone else should do. So um, I focus on the things I have to do. I hate you guys. I, I really want that talent. It's amazing. <laughs> um, so we have another question from the channel, or from the channel, from the chat, and is, what do you think? Let's let's pick one person, and that person has to answer each question. And what do you think is the best way to start learning German by yourself? Um, what about Maria, since she is uh, the queen of courses and people understanding her German? Sorry, I really have to ask you to come again because I was concerned in the chat and I missed the question. Sorry. You ignore me. That's okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> you hated me. <laughs> Us. All right, Maria, I'm talking to you. So, <laughs> what do you think is the best way to start learning German by yourself? Fix your goals. So decide why do you need to learn German? What, what is like, visualize you speaking German. As soon as you can do it, you can think about other stuff, but this is the priority number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very good. I will say the same, like fix your goals. And once you know what you, why you are doing it, you feel more motivated, right? All right. Um, you guys can ask a couple of more questions in the chat. I will try to read them. Um, we have another couple of minutes that went very fast. Do you, you see, like I said, we have an hour, but it's not a long time. So mm -hmm. I will try to read them. If you see any question that you want to answer, just feel free to go for it. Oh, uh, uh, uh. I've seen, where did the Michael learn psychology? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how do you learn psychology I don't think that's something you can really study from books you can learn theories and then see how they go in real life one of my biggest and most beautiful experiences with psychology was a five-year-long psychoanalysis which was a gift to mankind for me and um, I, I'm still deeply thankful for this experience but there's so many things it, it is basically about listening and observing yourself and others that you learn this from and by and it's it never ends like learning german it's basically an ongoing thing mm -hmm. definitely i don't think you can learn anything fully right what does that mean what does it mean to be exactly perfect? what does it mean it's just i don't think you can learn anything fully so you can just get as good as you can in something uh whatever it is and just i don't know what do you think am i wrong on that 
wasn't there a sentence, a quote, um, this, the wise man knows that he doesn't know much also. Like there's always more to learn to it, no? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, somebody said, uh, what are very good um, books to learn for uh, beginners? Do you have any options? I have um, Edish, how, how is it called? Um, das Idealpa, glaube ich. Um, das, I will write it in the chat. I read it when I was in A1 or something like that. So you can learn, uh, look for it. It's a really nice book with different stories. So you can um, learn some German with that. Do you guys have any kind of recommendation? Well, my whole course is based on a story. So uh, that's one thing to start with. But you can basically read almost anything unless you start with Goethe and Schiller, if you know how. <laughs> so maybe learn how to read stuff and then, then go through it and uh, with a good dictionary and with the right attitude. You mm -hmm. can almost read anything. I always recommend things that are connected to your heart um, mm -hmm. yeah, rather than other things. But people enjoy all kinds of stuff. So ba yeah. basically anything. And what is a big barrier when you learn a language? And that will be our last questions for today. So who wants to answer? What is the big barrier, a big barrier, when you learn a language? I think it's yourself. <laughs> the big barrier is yourself because you um, usually put yourself down like, no, I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. I cannot speak. I do. I make a lot of mistakes. So it's just overcoming your own insecurities when you learn a language and just go out, make all the mistakes you want to make or you need to make and you will go from there. But if you stay just on your sphere of like, no, I'm not doing this good, uh, I'm not good or whatever, you are never going to improve. So I will say you are your worst enemy and your best friend if you know how to deal with yourself. Um, what, what would you say, you guys? Yeah, I, I, talk. Would, I was sad that you should um, make it a habit Mm -hmm. And once you have a routine of learning German or any other language, um, of course, like, let's not talk about that, that you have to really love what you love the content. You have to be curious about the content. Um, you have to learn things that you can use in your daily life. But if you, if you make a habit out of learning like every day a bit or five days um, a week, mm -hmm. then you will suddenly that you're improving and that's one of the biggest motivations if you're suddenly understanding more and you you could answer something in German and that's so amazing but mm -hmm. this only learning like one day now it's Sunday and I'm learning I, I'm going through 20 YouTube videos that is not so good it's like the small steps so basically believe in yourself and create a habit would you agree yeah create a habit because they stick and then and then you see the progress Mm -hmm. Mm hmm exactly yeah I agree with that so uh one more um advice very fast from somebody if not no nope. okay if not then we're finishing here you guys B uh, before we finish I'm going to take a screenshot of today's group so smile for the camera please Amazing. I, heard, I think you heard that. So <laughs> very good. Thank you so much for being here. Um, it was a pleasure to talk to all of you. I learned a lot. Um, and thank you to all the viewers that stay here and chat with us. And yeah, thank you so much. It was fun. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. So thank you. 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 Thank you.